let's I guess just jump straight into it. So again, thanks everyone for um, for registering for for this University of Melbourne uh, training event. So um, my name's gonna my name's Hashan Mendes. I'm gonna be taking over the day one part of um, of what we've got. So today's just gonna be focusing on the uh, the geometry aspect of it as well as the meshing aspect of it as well. The first thing is technical support. So everyone's got access to technical support, um, whether you're a student or even if you're, you know, in the actual workforce, right? So that comes down to just helping you out through the actual process. Um, again, we're not going to be actually doing your projects for you, but really making sure you're going down the, the right path. Right. Um, so if you've got, you know, the email address is there, send us a little bit of an email about what your project is, description, um, what you're actually doing and what the actual problem is. And we can kind of have a bit of a chat and talk through your problem. Um, and, you know, this is the same thing that happens in the workforce as well. Um, there's a student download link over here. So you can actually go out to the Answer Student website. Um, you can download the, the student version of it for free. It is limited by nodes, but it's great for, for teaching. Leap also has plenty of content on YouTube. So we've got a lot of um, YouTube playlists. So a lot of these pr um, presentations will also be on YouTube as well. So if you want to check it out later on, you can. We've also got blog posts. So we've got write-ups on things like, you know, how to model a bolt if we're in FEA or things like turbulence modeling, right? What is Y plus? What do we need to do? Um, you know, what do I need to be aware of? Um, ANSYS also has a learning forum, so it's moderated by them, free to use, you can check it out. They've got some learning courses which are pretty cool if you guys are really starting off. Um, they've also got a YouTube channel, so how-to videos, tech videos, blogs, magazines as well, so you can kind of keep up to date with uh, what the latest technology is. Leap also has a learning hub that um, we've created and I actually manage it. So. Um, Actually, we'll fire it up um, if you hop onto it. So you can go through all of these links. It should be available to you. Actually, I'll bring the other one here. So if you go to the Leap website, um, so if, let's just go here, um, just, you know, leapos.com.au. On the right-hand side, you'll see log into the Leap Learning Hub. You'll be taken straight to this page. Uh, normally, you'll get a, um, a page about registration. So you can register yourself on the right hand side and you'll get an email with a secure password, right? It'll then take you to the home page. Um, so again, a bit of that support information is available on the home page as well, as well as a technical support form, right? So if you need support, fill all that in. And some of the resources that we were talking about and the student download as well. So then um, you can hop over to the fluids portion of it. If you're new, you can click on this getting started. And this is where a lot of our tutorials are going to be coming from. So there are individual tutorials that you can download. Um, and then if you go to the very bottom, there are also some um, some videos as well from from the actual answers team as well. Right. So definitely check those out after you've kind of gone through them. You can kind of go to the top here. Um, there are a bunch of other resources. So for instance, if you're interested in, in meshing, right, you need a couple of additional tutorials here. You can check that out. Um, if you're doing things like heat transfer, again, you'll find plenty of that stuff there as well, right? So um, plenty of content. And then afterwards, again, you, you know, the, some of the webinars, right? Some of the previous ones that we've done are actually up here as well. Um, or if you're interested in things like structural and you want to do a multi-physics simulation, you know, you can also um, go to the structures page and learn a little bit more as well. Cool. Um, awesome. Uh, the other thing is um, answers help. So um, if you if you fire up, actually, I'll just do it. Um, on on my machine, if you go to the the actual answers uh, folder, um, you can find uh, answers help so it should be at the very top you find that here uh, it'll launch up a online version of the help which is great right i've got a couple of things already starred um, but you can also look at everything kind of on the left hand side so in our particular case we're going to be using fluent if you're ever unsure about anything um, you can always go to the page you can see you've got plenty of documentation tutorials and videos as well so there's a lot of learning resources for you guys depending on what you're doing and if you go to things like the user guide um, I do this all the time by the way you know if I forget something um, there's you know I go into here and be like all right what was that thing right all right, I, I want to check out maybe some turbulence modeling um, I want to understand what this the spat alma model is and you can kind of walk through all of that. So it's got a bit of information. Um, 
if you say select something as well, it might also have some links to, you know, it'll tell you a little bit about it. And then it'll also go out to the theory guide, right? So if you've got um, papers that you need to write and you need to reference any actual equations or what you're doing in ANSYS, um, you can always, you know, actually take this, take this, um, take this as a reference as well. So this is super helpful. Um, there is too much to remember in one go. So just understand where you can find the actual resources and where you can find the information. Um, on here as well, I've got a bunch of troubleshooting links that I thought might be important. Um, things like understanding boundary conditions, turbulence, um, understanding the solver, which these, these are things that Errol's going to cover uh, tomorrow. Um, and things, some, some, uh, some advanced things as well. So things like adaption and a joint, right? Um, We'll start with a little bit of an introduction into CFD. Um, before we do that, I'll just have a look at the chat. Cool, so we've got a couple of extra people. Awesome. Um, so before actually before we get into this, um, does anyone have any questions? Um, you can just chuck it in the chat or raise your hand, um, and I'll just invite you to unmute yourself. I just don't want 100 people um, unmuting themselves in one go. Good so far. Awesome. Um, I'll go through these and then we'll kind of get into it. All good. Okay, I cut out a little bit. Sorry about that. I'll uh, I'll try to do what I can on my end. Um, if anything does go wrong, you'll you'll have um, you'll have the recording that you can go to. All right. So just want to see if there's anything else that I can do. Ah. Okay. Um, so a little bit about um, CFD, right? Um, what are we actually doing when it comes to it, right? So uh, the idea of what we're trying to do is just understand, especially today and tomorrow, um, just understand the actual workflow regarding computational fluid dynamics, right? CFD and some of the best practices as well. So there's no way you're gonna, you know, do one session and be an absolute uh, pro at it, but at least it will help you on your actual way to getting there and you can see your actual project. Um, and hopefully the resources are enough that you can at least get started. And if you need some additional help, you can come back to us and uh, we can help you out with that, right? Um, what are we actually doing? So we're, we're solving these characteristic equations. So things like conservation of mass, energy, things Newton's second law equations as well. So we're solving physics-based simulations with the idea of trying to understand uh, a detailed information about a specific kind of situation, right? Looking at things like pressure, velocity, if we've got uh, phase distribution, so what are the multiple different phases within our system? Um, that'll give us information about things like, you know, forces, lift and drag, um, and it can allow us to predict certain conditions as well, which allows us to then go away and, you know, improve the actual component. It's used throughout the actual engineering process. So uh, it starts off on the conceptual side, you know, before you've actually got something. Um, when you then get into some detailed kind of product design, maybe you've got some components, you know exactly what you want to make, you know, you can then go in and really start to refine the nitty gritty. Um, if you've got something already out there in the field or something goes wrong, you can use it as a bit of a troubleshooting tool to say, you know, how bad does it need to get to get to this level? Um, we can then use it afterwards in the optimization and the redesign aspect of it as well. So again, always looking for version two, version three, right? How can we make this product better and better? What do our customers want? How can we improve it? Um, and again, technical support is uh, available to everyone after training. So if you're you know, a bit, bit stuck, you can send us a message. Um, I don't want to get too deep into the actual equations, right? I'm going to have a couple of slides. Um, the equations themselves, it can be, you know, pretty, um, you know, pretty large. Um, fundamentally, what I want you to get away though, get away with it though, is that, you know, we've got some sort of, of geometry, you know, in our system, right? Um, we're then cutting it up into control volumes, right? Which is it's called a mesh. We're then applying some sort of algebraic expressions in order to make sure, you know, in this particular case, let's just say the amount of flow that comes into the system is exactly the same as the amount of flow that comes out of the system, right? Um, you know, that's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty general overview. In reality, we're solving what's called the Navier-Stokes set of equations. Right. It's a pretty complicated set of equations. It's a partial differential equation. Um, I like to think of it as a couple of these chunks. Right. We've got a transient term, a convection term, a diffusion term and a generation term. Right. 
So the transient term is looking at the unsteady nature of the actual flow. The convective term is looking at how, uh, looking at capturing the bulk motion of the flow, right? The diffusive term is looking at things like viscous flows. So if you've got things like buoyancy, right? And the generation or the removal of material um, is used if we're, you know, generating or removing certain materials. Right. Um, so with this equation, you can actually start to substitute different variables depending on what you're actually interested in to capture the physics flows. Right. So maybe it's you know you're definitely going to have some sort of velocity, some sort of pressure. Maybe there's turbulence in your model. Maybe you've got more than one species as well. Right. And we can actually start to add equations depending on what our specific situation asks for. Right. And what the physics that we're interested in asks for as well. Uh, it's important to keep in mind, even though the set of equations is exactly the same, different solvers actually execute it in different ways, right? So as an example, we're going to be using uh, Fluent. Fluent uses what's called a cell-based approach. CFX is another um, CFD modeling tool that we've got as well, and that uses a node-based approach. So even though, so if you have the exact same mesh, you get the exact same boundary conditions, because of how it actually discretizes the, the Navier-Stokes equations, right, because of how it actually kind of, um, how it kind of manages that information as well, you know, the results might not necessarily be exactly the same, right? So not every solver, even though it's uh, solving the same equations, is exactly the same. So you just got to keep that in the back of your mind as well. When it comes to the modeling process, it's important to understand that the modeling process itself um, is iterative, right? We start with some sort of identification of what my problem might be. We'll go then into pre-processing, so setting up the geometry, setting up the mesh. We'll then solve, look at the actual simulation, look at the results, review them. Are they what we expected? And then go through and maybe make some changes to it. Um, I was previously part of the FSA team, so through this whole thing, I've actually got, you know, um, I wanted to make a kind of consistent uh, model, so I've got the car that we'll be kind of talking about here and there. Um, so before you get started, though, it's important to understand, you know, what your actual project timeline is, um, how long do you have to actually do your simulation, what about design, manufacturing, testing, what if something goes wrong, right, what's your actual timeline, uh, what's the current literature out there, you know, what's already been done before, you don't really want to be reinventing the wheel. Um, component constraints as well, so if we're focusing on this front wing, you know, there are some rules around how big the front wing needs to be and how it's going to interact, right, um, but it's not just about you know, making say downforce on the front wing, but this component is also going to affect the rest of the car. So, you know, what am I? What are my actual constraints of my component? How does that really fit into my system? The other thing is manufacturing. You can make some really awesome parts, but if you don't have the time or the way to actually create them, you know, really, you know, you, you you're doing yourself a disservice. So, really understanding before you even get started with the simulation aspect of it, you know, how are you going to make this stuff, right? You don't want to make complicated curves if you can't actually create the component, right? And then the other thing is testing, right? How are you going to test and validate your actual simulations, right? Um, CFD isn't used to get rid of testing, it's used to kind of supplement it to make it even better. So you really got to think about what is the end goal looking like, how are you going to test some of these components? Ideally, before you even get started with these simulations, you've done all this stuff, you've done the hand calcs, you know exactly what you should expect, and you've got some sort of testing matrix as well. So this is, again, in this particular case, maybe I'm looking to maximize the amount of downforce created by my front wing. I've got multiple cases. I've got some input velocities, you know, so I've got one parameter. Maybe the thing that I might be interested in changing is the angle of attack on the, you know, the second flap, right? So I've got uh, an, uh, another input parameter there, the two, and you've got an output parameter as well. So maybe I'm interested in downforce in this particular case. In reality, it's a lot more complicated, right? Um, when it comes to pre-processing, so pre-processing, we're going to be using Space Claim. Um, I've normally got a bunch of slides that I go through. I'm going to try it a little bit differently and actually fire up the software and, um, and go through it. All right. So give me a tick. So one sec, I'll see if there's any um, questions. Yep, so the slides and everything, by the way, everyone will be um, sent out afterwards. Um, definitely. Okay, so. Um, cool. So when it comes to modeling, um, I'm gonna, we're going to be using what's called space claim, right? So I'm going to be uh, firing it up in standalone. Um, I'm using 2020 R2. If you guys have an older version, um, it was previously called SCDM, right? So you might want to find that. 
um, and we can go, we can fire it up, right? Um, I've got some geometry, I wanna play around with it. The way I look at Space Claim, it's a pre-processing tool. So it allows me to get my model ready for simulation, right? And there are a lot of tools inside Space Claim that actually make it super easy for me to do that. Um, ideally, you know, we've got great CAD coming out from wherever, but the reality is that, you know, not everyone has that luxury. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm actually just gonna, you know, I've got this component, I'm just gonna drag it up to the top. Um, it brings in, we can also go, you know, file import and things like that. May, uh, this is the model that I want to be looking at, right? Um, let's just say we've got this from, you know, someone else. Maybe it's come from SolidWorks, from Creo or something like that. Um, but I want to be focused on, you know, what's happening around this front wing. Um, just a general tour of the, the user interface. So I've got a structure tree on the left-hand side where I've got my components. You can see they're, they're kind of folded to, to make it a little bit easier to, to check out. So I've got my aerodynamics components kind of in here. Um, I've got a selection tool and I've also got these groups tools. So we'll look at that a little bit later on. Um, when I've got something selected, right, let's just show that. Um, I've also got things like properties, right? So I can understand what the actual component is. Um, I've got my ribbon toolbar at the top. So if I need to do any sketching, um, we'll be looking at things like the design tab, um, the display tab for checking out what's happening. If you've got assemblies, we can play around with them. If you need to measure certain components, we've got something there. We're not gonna be playing around with this too much, but if you do have facets, you've got CFD, um, you know, scan information, we can actually modify them and play around with them in Space Claim. Um, these are some really important tools that we'll be using in a bit. They're the repair and the prepare functions. It allows us to really go in and actually get rid of some things that we might not really care too much about, but the space claim, uh, but the mesher, sorry, in Fluent or the solver might really care a lot about, right? Um, things like our workbench tab. So if you want to actually transfer something out to answers, we can actually do it within space claim. Um, if we want to do any detailing, some sheet metaling, there's some additional tools with there, things like Keyshot as well. Right. Um, for this particular component, though, let's just have a look at exactly um, what we've got. So um, what I might want to do to begin with, right, I might want to play uh, play around with this. So understand exactly what it's looking like. You can see, you know, I've got quite a bit happening around this region. Um, I can take a certain axes. I can go into here and look at things like um, my section tool. Right. So I can look at this, you know, play around with this component, kind of move it around a bit, understand exactly what's happening. Um, if I want to, I can select something, pause for a second, this small window comes up, and I can make it transparent to understand what's happening. Um, and if we look at this component, it looks like I've got quite a bit of things, right? I've got some surfaces here. Um, so if I look at my front wing, anything that's a solid will have this icon. Anything that's a surface will have this icon. So maybe something's been exported incorrectly. Um, so I might want to use some of my tools, right? Um, again, I'm really focusing on just the front wing. So I can actually take both of these components here um, and I can actually um, suppress them, right? So it's not going to bring it over to the fluids. Um, I've got a, a mirror in this particular case, so I'll suppress these ones as well on this side. Um, again, something else, what am I interested in? You know, chassis, I definitely need suspension arms. I'll keep the ones at the front, but you know, maybe I don't care too much about the suspension arms kind of back here. So I can say select, if I triple click, I can select the body on that one and same as this one, right click, I can suppress it for physics, right? Um, I don't really care about the wheels as well. So um, let's just let's just suppress both of the, the rear wheels. I don't care at all. Um, and let's leave that. So. Uh, I can hide everything for, for physics then afterwards. So I've got some surfaces here again. I can just get rid of that. Um, I can switch this back over to my transparent mode. Um, so I can't just create a, an enclosure around here at the moment because I've got some surfaces. I've got some things, some weird things happening here. So generally, the first thing that I'll go to is my repair tab. So um, if we look at this, this wing in this particular case, right? So I'm just going to hide everything just so we can focus on that. Um, Right, um, you can see here, I've kind of got two surfaces here. So I can use things like the stitch tool to actually stitch these components together. Um, I've got some extra edges in there as well. well. We'll deal with that a little bit later. If I show my end plate, right, um, I've got some weird gap between here. So I've, I've done all these, so I, you know, I, I kind of know um, 
how I've made it gone wrong. But you can see here, in this particular case, anything that's solid has this crosshatch kind of going through it. This one over here, um, we don't see anything. So I can look at things like missing faces. It can identify it for me and, uh, and fix it up straight away, right? Um, if I look at my wheel, right, so let's hide everything else. Um, I can see I've got all these weird extra edges in there. Maybe the, you know, the manufacturing is what it is. I can use things like the extra edge feature to remove everything that I don't need. Now, the problem with these extra edges is that the mesher is one of going to put a lot of small elements across there, right? So if I don't really want to focus on that, um, it might be unnecessarily adding elements where I don't need to, right? So we want to do these things to clean it up. You can see it's also gotten rid of this edge over there. There are some times where I might want extra edges, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, things like split edges as well. So you can see here, you know, I've actually got extra vertices along this line, and because of that edge, it's created some there as well. Um, what happens is that, it, you know, these things come through into the mesher, and it'll want to put an actual, you know, element around that vertice. Um, so you can see it'll unnecessarily kind of refine, you know, around these areas that I really don't care too much about, right? So normally the first thing I'll do, I'll go through these settings, you know, making sure this is kind of exactly, um, exactly what I want. All right, let's go back to here, hide everything else, get rid of that plane. Um, the other thing in this particular case, right, is if I'm really interested in just the front wing, um, I've got ASA coming in just in a specific direction, just in one direction going forward. Um, so, you know, do I need the full car, right? Probably not, yeah. So I can actually, you know, suppress the ones over here, right? So I can say, right click on that and suppress it straight away. Um, the other way, if I highlight it, triple click, I can suppress that that way as well, right? Um, and then I can just go in and kind of do what I need to. So there are different ways to do the exact same thing. Um, so maybe I want to focus maybe around uh, these areas, right? Um, maybe I need to go back, I might maybe make some changes if I needed to as well. And we've got some other geometry that really plays around with that. Okay, maybe I don't need this as well. So I can go in and uh, suppress that. Right, so maybe I've cleaned up exactly kind of the way uh, the way that I wanted to. Um, the next thing that I want to do is actually create my domain. So I can go into the prepare tab here, um, create this enclosure, and I can select all of these bodies. So it's going to create an enclosure around me. Um, there's like a default cushion angle. If we cushion, sorry, if we make this say 200%, it'll kind of make it pretty big. Um, I'll use the default for now, and I'll start to really cut it back. Right, so. If I just hide this, you'll see what's happened is that the enclosure has taken, you know, the geometry, it's extracted what's called the fluid domain, and it's removed all the internal components in there. So I go, if I go into section view, you know, and I take a section through here, you can see I've just got a void because I don't really care about what's happening inside. I just want to look at what's happening outside the, uh, the air. Um, what I might do, though, is start to cut it up, right? Um, this is going to be my floor, um, but I don't really need that. I can use these, the axes over here to create a plane, and I can split the body through that plane there, right? And I can get rid of the component at the bottom. Now, if I zoom in, you can see I've, I've got a radius around here as well, which is exactly um, what I wanted to do. If I have sharp angles, it can cause a problems in my mesher, right? So I've kind of pre-created the wheel such that when I create my enclosure, you know, it creates it exactly the way that I want to as well. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do, let's just say we take this plane over here and we want to split it down the middle, right? Because I don't need my full body, right? So I've got the enclosure. Um, if I need to, I can then go in and start to make it a little bit bigger, right? Let's just say I need a bigger inlet. I can use the pull tool here and pull it up, right? If I want a specific direction, I can say select the pull. Um, I've got this ruler option, I can pin it to something, and then I can actually specify, you know, what my dimension needs to be, right? Ideally, when it comes to um, fluids, generally what you're trying to do is create an actual domain far enough away from um, the actual region that we don't have, you know, these effects, right? We don't have, we don't want the wall very close to the actual geometry, because that way the the actual flow will, will accelerate locally, and that can cause us a bit of a problem. Um, another, you know, key thing 
to make your CFD workflow a little bit easier is if you like non-dimensionalize things, it makes it a little bit easier to hand over information to someone else. So if you've got a report and you say, you know, the dimensionless length is L, it's maybe the length of the car, I make sure my inlets are X lengths above, you know, here and there, what I, whatever I need to do. Now, the next thing that I need to do for my geometry preparation um, is create some name selections, right? So I actually need to tell the solver um, what the name selections, what these all these faces are, right? So I can select something, hit this create name selection, um, and I'll give it what I want, right? So I know this is an inlet. Another way to make these things, if you hover over it, is control G, right? So select it, control G. You can make this an outlet. Right, I know these two things need to be walls, so I can give it that. The bottom, I want to specify it a little bit differently because I'm, I need to have a rot, uh, I need to have a moving floor, so I can call that ground. I can pick this up separately, and this particular case is going to be what's called a symmetry. Right, so I've cut my kind of model in half. Um, it doesn't have any gradients, no flows going through that at all. Um, it's going to be a no, uh, it's going to be a free slip wall, so there's going to be no boundary layers being created on that. Right? Afterwards, what I like to do, select everything. Um, it can be a little bit complicated going and hide all these faces. Then I can make my selections, you know, around these components. Right? Um, let's just say, go on the top. Um, I want to pick up this wheel. One of the ways that I can do that is if I'm in my selection tool. If I select from say the top left to the bottom right, so got my left mouse click selected, go all the way through, um, you can see it'll select anything that it fully encompasses. And if I start to move that, you know, it gets rid of all these faces. If I go the other way and you'll notice the box is now dashed, any face that it actually touches, it'll create this selection around it. And you can see at the bottom, you know, I've selected 10 faces who so will tell me exactly what I want. So what I might do is say is take these selection filters. Um, I need to call this a wheel. I'm going to give that a rotating wheel later on, right? And then I can hide these faces. Um, these I'll use the other selection technique. Pick all these up as my suspension arms. Suspension, right? Maybe I need to select all these faces. All right, that doesn't quite work for me. You know, I've selected all these additional ones. I can go in and unselect them if I want to. Um, but I think what might make it a little bit easier if I go, say, across this way, right? There you go. So it's got exactly everything that I wanted to. Um, so I can now give that uh, a name. So I can call that wing. Let's hide both of these components, right? And then I can just select the rest of it and call that my chassis. Right. So this is an example. This is a this would be a geometry that now I've got set up. Um, I can hide everything I'm not interested in. Right. I actually want to hide these ones as well. So let's suppress that for physics. Um, I just want the fluid domain. All right. Hide all. Oops, sorry. Let's show all. Hide all suppressed. Bam. Um, and if I go through, you know, I normally then go through afterwards. Make sure I have, you know, created everything that I'm interested in. Right, just do a sanity check. Um, what happens if, it, if if there's a face that's not picked up as a name selection, it'll just be called a generic name and just makes it harder later on if I want to take a specific, um, put a, add a specific boundary condition to it or take some specific information from it, right? Um, so that's, that's kind of how, um, um, that's how I'd go through the process of setting something like this up. Um, the other thing that I might be interested in, what's called bodies of influence. So bodies of influence, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, apply some additional um, additional refinement around some regions, right? So if I select this face, um, I wanna sketch on it. Um, I wanna create my a rectangle here. I can then use my kind of triad system to look exactly how I want. Maybe I want to, you know, create a body of influence around here because I want to pick up some vortex structures. So I can go over to my display tab uh, and then take this component, select the face, uh, and I can use my add selection material to actually create this body around here, right? I can then give it a specific name, so F2 BOI. And ideally what I want to do is move everything to its own component. Um, the reason I want to do that is because if I create something else, and I do some sort of function, sometimes it'll automatically combine these things together, right? Um, so yeah, and then we've got, say, let's just say that. Um, and if we need to, you know, maybe we have some additional 
bodies of influence around this region as well, right? Um, so this is a bit of an example about how to say set up an, an external error case. Um, I've also got a couple of others. So let's just say we've got a, uh, a turbocharger. So this is um, so this is the turbocharger you can see here, right? If I take a if I sorry if I select that and hit X on my keyboard, I go into the section view, right, which I can also see up here. And you can see, you know, I've got some things kind of interacting. Um, I've got some problems around here that I might need to actually pick up. Um, this, you know, I should I should expect to see some sort of cross hatching. So it looks like there are some faces missing, or there's something around this object over here. Uh, if I need to, I can then go in and, and actually move that component around as well. I'm going through these tools relatively quickly. The reason for that is that um, I want to give you guys a good general overview. Um, the actual kind of tutorials, which you'll look at later on, really go into in, into a lot more detail as well. So keep that in mind. Um, so maybe in this particular case, I've got an internal flow. Uh, I'll go over to my repair tab and look at my missing faces. Looks like it's it's giving me some information. Or I've got one missing face around here. Um, I've got some options on the left if I need to play around with them. Uh, if I hit the tick button though, cool, awesome. It looks like it automatically generates it into a uh, into this solid for me. Um, you can see here I've got all these things that are all these solids. Um, what I actually might do is you can see here I've got these two components that are that are touching, right? What happens if I don't have them in their own components? If I use the pull tool, and let's just say you know I did something and I want to pull this a little bit more. You can see around here, it might automatically combine everything into one component, right? Which may not be exactly what I want to do, right? So if we go back, you know, if I move each of them to a new component and I make this pull function on this again, right? P on my keyboard is, a, is, is the pull tool. Right, you see it's not automatically combining all these things, right? So that's why I generally recommend to anyone when it comes to managing structures, managing trees, components, um, have everything in its own component. Um, again, if I go into my section view, one of the things that I've noticed is I've got some things that aren't quite in alignment. So if I use my assembly tab, um, I've got this align tool. Um, I can select this component and the one on the left, it'll actually move what I need to. Uh, again, over here, I need to move this kind of into place as well. And you can kind of see around these regions, I've got some problems. So again, I'll move, select these two faces, move them in, interfacing a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that at the moment, right? And go through there as well, right? If I want to extract the geometry, you know, in this purple component, right, I can use these uh, this extraction tool, right, the volume extraction. Um, but before doing that, one of the things I noticed here is that, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of CAD around here, right? There's a lot of these small fine features that allow that will kind of pick they'll, that will get picked up when I uh, mesh it, right? And I may not be that interested in picking these things up. Um, I can select these two components and use the fill button, right? So um, I can use the actual fill sorry tool here as well, but you can see it doesn't quite work for me. Right, so maybe I might approach this when it comes to um, fixing up my geometry in a little bit of a different way. So let's just say I create a plane over here. Um, I'm going to use this plane as a cutting body and use this kind of combine tool. Um, if I select it, I can hit the move tool and I can create a copy of this plane. If I hit control, I can move it out to here. So I'll use the combine tool to cut this component. Right, I can then take this face over here use the pull tool and pull it up to, um, use this up to button here, up to this face, right? So now I've kind of got rid of some of the complexity around that area that I may not necessarily be interested in, right? So let's make it opaque again. Um, now I can go into my prepare tab. I can do what's called a volume extraction. Uh, I'll pick this interface here. Um, if I've got in any of these tools, by the way, at the top left and at the bottom as well, it gives me a little bit of information about exactly what I need to do for my next couple of steps. Uh, the other thing is I, if I go F1, it'll open up a help and it'll give me, again, a bit more information. So I know these two kind of faces are capping. I'll select an internal face, right? And if I hit the preview faces here, 
it'll show me um, what's happening. So it kind of starts in the middle and it kind of finds its way out. It's kind of selecting everything that I want to. Um, if there's something that goes wrong, you might see some weirdness happening and um, you can pick it up using this kind of inside base preview. So now that I've got it, again, I can go into there. Um, let's just say we right click and click onto that, sorry, and go hide others, select that. We can go into transparency mode. And now we can see that we've got our uh, fluid that's been extracted. If I take this here, again, I can take that face, go into section mode. I normally like to do what's called like a sweep through, right? So you just kind of pull it through, make sure kind of what you expect is there. Right, if I take it in the middle, I'm expecting some components. That should be fine, right? That's exactly what I expect. Um, or if I, again, go into that, if you hover over any of these things, by the way, there's a there's a shortcut. So section mode is X. Um, go into there, X. V pulls it into plan view, right? So it makes it, highlights it there. Um, if I use the move grid, again, I can kind of, almost like I'm moving through the fluid, right? You can see kind of what's happening as I'm moving through. So that's a, it's a good way to kind of check and make sure um, what I've done is exactly kind of what I've expected, right? Um, cool. So those were the, I guess those are the two main things that I wanted to show you guys. The next thing is going to be on, on meshing. Um, let me just bring up my slides just to make sure there's nothing particular that I've forgotten. Actually, I've got a couple of slides maybe I can go through as well. So the difference is, is that when you've got different starts, uh, types of flow fields, there might be different ways you want to actually create your geometry. So we can create, um, so this in this particular case is actually a 2D simulation of a rocket. Um, because it's a high speed kind of flow, the pressure changes, you know, get propagated downstream. They don't get propagated up. So you can actually make your inlet relatively smaller. And in this particular case, all these boxes are these refinement regions. Um, and they're focusing around areas where, you know, you might see some shocks as well. So, and out here, you know, instead of a symmetry boundary condition, we have what's called a far field boundary condition. And that doesn't reflect shocks. Uh, which is exactly what we need for you know these high speed flows. So depending on what your actual physics is, depending on what you're modeling and what your areas are, um, there may be different ways you actually want to set up your geometry. Um, um, this is the body of influence. A couple of key points that I want to that when you guys go away with. Um, so when it comes to the pre-processing aspect of it, um, understanding exactly how much time that you have is important before you even start you know, CFD. It's really important to have your hand calcs and all that stuff down pat before you even think about opening up CFD and doing, you know, a complicated three, you know, a 3D simulation or anything like that. Um, identifying what your actual geometry is, you know, can you, do you need the full geometry? Can you make some sort of simplifications to make your life a lot easier? Um, a lot of the times as well, we often start with something that's simplified and then we start to add a little bit of complexity to it. That way, when something starts to go wrong, we can very quickly identify where the actual problem is um, and go through that, right? Um, using the repair and the prepare functions is really important. There are these features, again, that me and you might not really care or even pick up, especially when you've got big geometries, though. Um, it can be a bit of a problem. Um, and the important thing is that having some clean geometry, you know, a clean mesh, uh, will really help with convergence later on. The you regarding the repair and the prepare functions, a couple of things that are really important. So things like removing sharp features and fillets as well, if you can. Um, all these things are going to add a lot of mesh elements later on. Um, re removing and resolving things like small gaps, faces, or edges. Again, all of these will cause you problems. Defeature where possible. Again, you can always add complexity afterwards if you need to. Um, so ideally, you know, you sometimes you need to make changes to the initial CAD. If you've got a relationship with someone that's actually created their CAD, maybe you can talk to them about giving you, you know, CAD that might be appropriate. Um, and using things like bodies of influence. So these kind of green options, green boxes over here, bodies of influence, they will, we can locally refine around some of these regions. Um, and then making sure the domain doesn't get affected by the actual flow field as well. Um, regarding tutorials, so if you hop on that getting started side, right, um, 
there are some modules. You can just go from one to four. A lot of these ones are talking about, so um, just space claim core skills, so creating and removing geometry, um, repairing, and then extracting geometry as well for, for fluids analysis. Um, again, these additional slides, you guys can kind of go through them at your own pace. Um, these are just go into a lot more details about what you can do, right? So uh, as an example, if we look at the, um, if we go to the pull tool, right? So the pull tool can do quite a bit. You know, if we've got a face, we can pull it up into a solid. If we've got a line, we can pull it up into a surface. And if we've got a point, we can pull it up into an actual edge. Um, we've also got other things like um, sweeping along an axis if you want to create something, drafts. Uh, we can also use it as a scaling tool as well. Um, if we've got this, we can pull it up to a specific direction, right? This tab, this component, um, it can actually take the profile and pull it up to what we're interested in. If we take the edges instead, though, it'll just kind of transport those edges across to there as well, right? So different ways of really using this tool, again, using things like the revolve feature. And we can even uh, create things like helical uh, structures as well, right? Um, when we're pulling, we can actually use this to, to either pull where we can add to a component, we can cut away from it, or we can create something, but it doesn't automatically get merged with that second component as well, right? Um, if we've got an edge, we can create uh, rounds, right? So if we need to make fillets, um, we can actually make chamfers. We can extrude these edges, copy them, um, or pivot around them as well, right? So a lot of really great ways that we can use, you know, a single tool. Um, ideally, look, you don't have to be using Space Claim. That's just obviously the tool that we've got, which is why I'm talking about it. If you can do some of this stuff in, you know, in um, in SolidWorks or, or Inventor or anything like that, you know, having good key clean geometry is, is really the key here. Right. Um, so that is kind of the section on geometry. Um, the next one's going to be on pre-processing, but before we do that, I want to take a bit of a break. So um, it's around 10 o'clock at the moment. Do we have any questions at all? So anyone, um, you can either just raise your hand or throw it in the chat and we can just answer them. Um, so I think I've got, yes, yeah, slides will be available. Yeah, so I'll unmute you. Oh, no, I can't unmute you. Um, so Conrad, um, if you want to make, you can unmute I was yourself. just, gonna, uh, yeah, no worries. I was just going to ask with the boundaries you set up. So you're going to talk about the boundary conditions you would do there, where you would have, you don't want to, so for that example with the, the F1 car, you don't want to have any boundary yep. layer being created on that. Yep, what pretty much. Interest, do you? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah. well, the, the BOI will be used later on. It, the actual BOI will be removed, right? And that volume will actually be used to, um, to, um, to, to, to refine, the, refine the volume mesh, right? But yeah, you're right. So we'll talk about that a little, little bit later on. But in, you know, let's just say this, this, yeah. um, this, this case over here, what I would actually want is I'd want boundary layers on, I'd actually want boundary layers probably on the ground because I know I've got a, a, a gradient there, right? So yeah. I want them on the ground and all of these components as well, right? And having them yeah. as a name selection, it means I can specifically pick these things up. I don't really care about, there's no boundary oh, layer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's no boundary layer on the actual inlet or outlet. The symmetry, there's no boundary layer yeah. there as well. Um, and the other thing is, right, like the wall, you know, the wall, ideally, you want to have it so far away that even if there is one, it doesn't actually affect what's happening around the car, right? Yeah. So you so can by actually... By naming create... all of the surfaces on the car, you're able to create the boundary layers there? Mm hmm Yep, exactly. Okay, so it doesn't... Yeah. That's, you actually have to... Select them all like that? Okay, I get you. Well, you, you don't have to select them all like that. It's just super convenient, right? Okay, yeah. Because it, it means later on, um, if I want to get really fancy, and let's just say I want to have a different number of boundary layers on the front wing compared to having them on the wheel or the chassis, I can actually do that if I've got a name selection for them, right? If I've got a selection for them. Okay, right? no worries. Choose that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, right, so, you know, maybe I want a Y plus, like a, a really fine mesh around the wing because I've got, you know, uh, plenty that I want to pick up. But all the way around here, I don't care too much. Yeah. Um, 
So Noah, apologies if I got your name wrong. Do you want to unmute yourself and ask yes. questions? Yes. So I have a question. So, um, how far would you do like geometry simplification in order like to reduce, uh, the time of the like the processing? So in yeah. here, like I can see that you have like detailed the geometry in terms of like the um like the um, sachet and the front, and you detailed it with fillets and um from SolidWorks or CAD, and then so. Would that impact the processing time for the meshing, for example, as well as the processing when you want to receive the results? Definitely, yeah. So the that a little bit of that really comes down to a bit of experience, right? So when you start off, um, you might want to make it a little bit coarser than you assume and then add a little bit of complexity. If I was thinking about this, right, the question I'd be asking myself is, okay, what's really going to affect the flow features around here? I definitely know my wheels and my wing, my suspension, that's definitely going to get affected. You know, around here, yes, you know, what's happening, if I've got anything, any vortices, right, coming off the front here, very important. Right, but in reality, you know, do I really think this driver is going to affect it too much? No, nah, I could, I could probably actually get rid of that. Right, this roll hoop, I really don't care. Right, I can actually make some, some, some improvements and get rid of all that stuff because it is going to improve. Um, it's going to reduce my meshing time, and it's going to make means I've got quicker, quicker simulations as well. Um, if you're always unsure, I, I always recommend just do a test case, right? Maybe maybe do a simulation where you've got all these features, right? Run a quick simulation, look at the results, get rid of those features in the second one, right? Do a right, quick run, um, look at the results and ask yourself, you know, uh, what are the forces? Are they changing a huge amount? Um, do I need to make these changes? Are the flow features that I expect to see, are they, are they different? Are they what I expect, right? It can be a bit difficult depending on your geometry. Um, and it might be one of those things you want to you, you want to actually test out if you're not 100 percent sure. Um, and I guess if you've got if you've got by the way you know I'm assuming this is for a, a project or an FYP or a PhD, um, you can put all of that as well by the way into your actual you know report right being like this is the initial geometry I did a quick test case I didn't need all of this this allowed me to run more simulations over the time that I had. Another big thing is computational resources. Not everyone has a lot of computational resources, right? So I've got a four core machine with X amount of RAM. You know, if I've got too much mesh, I just can't run it. If it's running transient, it's taking, you know, four days to get a result, it becomes a bit of a problem, right? So these are the things you want to keep in the back of your mind. Um, and you'll start to learn and pick them up as well with, with the amount of experience that you've gained. Cool. Um, any other questions or, you know, again, anyone can raise their hand.